Good okay. luck. Thanks. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Limitless Learning, a Global Perspective Through ESS Case Method. My name is Martina, and I will be the moderator today on behalf of the PREP team. In this online session, you will get the chance to learn how ESA MBA pro program can help you to be a better leader in these uncertain times. Our speakers today are Paula, Amorim, and Fabrizio. They will give you a really valuable information about the MBA program. Feel free to type your questions during the entire webinar, and they will take time to give you an answer at the end. If you face any troubles with the sound or presentation, you can switch to Zoom up on the left bottom on your screen. And I think that everything is set, and I'm giving the floor now to Paula. Thank you, Martina, for this very lovely present, um, introduction, and thank, thank you all of you for being here with us today. Um, so I just wanted to start by introducing myself really quickly. I'm the head of admissions uh, for the Mastery Management and the full-time MBA at ESA. I'm also a graduate uh, from ESA, so I graduated in the class of 2016 in the MBA. I've been working for the school since my graduation, so it's been five years. I was previously responsible for candidates applying from Latin America, and I was based in our Sao Paulo campus. I am originally from Brazil, um, but since the beginning of 2020, I was appointed as the new director, and that's when I moved to Barcelona, where I'm connecting from now, our sunny and beautiful Barcelona. Uh, so before we uh, dive um, deep into the case methods, I just wanted to um, uh, talk about ESA a little bit. Uh, so you have uh, the context of uh, where I'm coming from. And I think that the best way to start any presentation on ESA is to talk about our missions because the mission is the sole reason of our existence. Uh, we were founded because we believed that uh, we could make the world a better place through um, uh, the development of leaders that would aspire to have a positive, deep and lasting impact, not only in, in uh, companies, but also people and society in general, general through some underlying values of professional excellence, uh, integrity and spirit of service. So we are very romantic in the sense that we believe that um, if we have ethical and good leaders running the companies that run the world, we could have a better world at the end. And um, for those that don't know ESA, um, <clears throat> I just wanted to bring uh, a few words and some, some information. Uh, we are focused in developing leaders that are ethical, that have the human values um, and people in the center of all their decisions. And uh, we are one of the uh, longest um, and oldest uh, business schools in, in, in Europe. We were founded in 58. Uh, and we were the first um, two-year MBA program in the region. Uh, we have strong, strong partnerships um, around the world, including 16 associated schools, um, uh, mostly in emerging markets. And these are schools that use the case methodology and they're also uh, aligned with the philosophy of um, ethical leadership. Uh, and the idea is to increase our reach and um, the impact that uh, having good leaders um, uh, around the world that ESA is so committed in having. We have five um, campuses around the world. So I'm connecting from Barcelona, but we also have um, New York, Madrid, Sao Paulo, where I was based before, as, I, as I've mentioned, and uh, the last one to um, be launched was Munich. We are consistently top ranked. Um, in the latest um, MBA ranking in uh, 2020, we were ranked as number four in the world uh, from the Financial Times, first one in The Economist, and um, in the executive education um, uh, ranking, we've been ranked number one in the world for the past six years. And the corporate social responsibility is the one that we've uh, ranked uh, number one for already a couple of years in a row. And I think that this is very related to the mission and um, values that we're trying to instill in our, in our students. And this is the portfolio of um, uh, programs that we have. I don't wanna go um, um, take so much time in this, but just for you to understand um, um, how ESA is structured. We are a business school. So we are part of the University of Navarra that sits in Pamplona 
but we are quite independent. And um, if you see our campuses, what, what you're going to have, it's basically graduate students. Uh, so we start with the master in management that are their youngest uh, um, students. Then we have the MBA, the executive MBA, and the global executive MBA, and the PhD. These are the degree programs. And we have the executive education programs for like the custom programs, um, um, the short focus programs. And these are for more senior um, executive uh, professionals that want to not necessarily have um, a full time uh, and um, an immersive um, uh, experience. And these are the programs that have been uh, ranked number one uh, for the past six years. Um, and I think that the interesting part here and that, that the case method also enables this is that uh, we have professors that teaches um, in all the programs. So the, um, the knowledge and the experiences from the students are constantly being transferred uh, through the professors. And I think that this is very advantageous for the participants. And the four pillars that mark our students' careers are um, entrepreneurial spirit. So it's not to say that necessarily we expect all our students to be entrepreneurs in the future, but we want the drive and the willingness to uh, change, right? So if you see something that could be improved, um, we want our students to have that power um, and that will and grit to make the change. Um, we want our students to use their careers um, to create positive impact. Um, and the, the, um, uh, the cases that we use and the um, um, diversity that we have in class um, is uh, meant to build in our students a global mindset, right? So we, we know that a business is something that can be very cultural. Uh, so a lot of what uh, the way that you tackle a problem um, is very much related to the background that you have and the experiences that you've lived so far. So if you are in a class um, that you have people from all over the world and you're also talking about cases uh, and discussing cases that are from different parts of the world, you start building this global mindset and you understand um, other regions uh, in a better way other than just yours. We use the approach of the general management, so we're not specialized uh, in one specific area of knowledge. We believe that um, uh, um, our students should have a holistic understanding of what a company is. And, and then I'm going to go deeper a little bit in the end on how the program is structured so you understand um, the moments that you can specialize in your MBA, but the first year will be a general management um, perspective. And then in the center of everything, we have people, right? So we hope that um, our students get uh, all the other four pillars um, to build this sort of prioritization on how we uh, make decisions and how we um, put people first uh, whenever we have um, to decide on something. And then the case methods. So just a little bit of history. Um, so ESA was founded, um, uh, as we saw in one of the slides, in, uh, in the late 50s. And how it was, was um, the, the dean of the University of Navarra went to Harvard. Well, he, he first looked around, saw was, um, what was uh, happening in the market, and uh, decided to go for the best in class, right? And Harvard um, launched its MBA in 1908. Uh, so it had been around for 50 years already. So the dean went uh, to Harvard, did an immersion there, understood how the case method uh, worked and brought the, um, uh, that methodology to Europe and also the, the MBA format, right? And then just to understand how the case method really works. Um, so for those that haven't, um, uh, haven't ever seen uh, a case before, like I've, I had never seen before I came in, uh, to the MBA in 2014. It's basically uh, 10 to 15 pages of a context on someone that is facing a business problem in a certain uh, point in time, in a certain company, right? So you're gonna read a lot uh, to understand what the person was going uh, through. In the end, you're gonna have uh, graphs, exhibits, p and pictures, anything that will help you understand a bit better um, 
the situation. And then with your own um, uh, understanding, you will have to make a decision. What, you, what would you do um, if you were in that person's situation and what types of information you would use uh, to get to that conclusion? Right? So you are exposed to real life uh, problems and from all sectors. And I think that this is uh, something that I found very uh, exciting. I come before the MBA, I was working with consulting. Um, so I had been exposed to some uh, sectors, uh, but not many, to be honest. Uh, I'm an industrial engineer by training. Um, so I didn't um, have the formal training in business. And that was also very exciting. Uh, but you are constantly exposed to all types of companies, right? From all sectors. Some are sexier than others, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, you have um, cases on sectors and products that you, ev you never thought they existed, um, which can be very interesting as well. And it also widens um, uh, your possibilities, right? Not necessarily, um, you might even consider um, a specific sector for your career that you haven't um, uh, considered before just because you didn't know. Um, and second, you gain this CEO transversion, uh, transversal vision of the company because you will be tackling business uh, problems in not only strategy or marketing, but also operations, leadership, um, uh, corporate finance, financial accounting. So the idea is not for you to necessarily be a specialist in all these uh, different topics, but the moment that you sit on a table uh, with uh, people from other departments, at least you understand what they are saying and you can contribute, right? Um, you have group discussion, discussions led by expert professors in the field. And I think that the, the, the group discussion, and we're going to go into more details um, in a bit, I think that this is the most interesting and exciting part of the case method is the fact that you're not just analyzing a problem on your own or listening to one professor uh, speak to you, right? You're actually um, putting your mind into a problem and discussing with other people that have other minds and that have other perspectives on um, that, that, that same problem, right? And that's why when, and when the... Um, uh, um, the discussion gets uh, more exciting and uh, more enriching. Uh, it's a very practical way of learning. So again, instead of just uh, sitting in the classroom and write uh, things in your notebook uh, from the blackboard and listen, uh, listen to one professor speak, um, you're actually putting your hands and your, your head into thinking what you would do. And, uh, and also, uh, learning the types of problems that there are out there in the world, right? Uh, sometimes um, we are exposed to very different uh, situations uh, through the cases, and these are problems that really happened, right? Uh, that someone just decided to write a case on it, uh, but these are the problems that real people are facing out there. So, um, Yes, we do learn theory, but that theory is always directly applied to a real case uh, and a real problem that was happening. Uh, and at the end of the program, after 19, 15 or 19 months um, of classes, you're gonna have almost four, more than 400 uh, case discussions, okay? And in the bottom line, what happens, um, what a case really is, is a decision-making exercise, right? Um, so this means that for 400 times in less than two years, you will, you will um, exercise your decision-making, right? So what we are expecting our students to be in the end is excellent decision-makers. Eh? And I don't know how uh, strong that sounds uh, to you, but uh, having uh, gone through the experience and now five years after my graduation, um, what uh, my manager and the leader really <clears throat> is and, and does uh, the whole day is to make decisions, right? And to get um, uh, different bits of information uh, that are never perfect and that we never have the uh, enough time and the perfect time and all the time that we wanted to, um, to make that decision, but we have to do it anyway, right? And that's um, uh, one of the biggest and strongest learnings that we have at ESA 
is um, you learn to um, analyze data, uh, base your decisions on data, but understand that that data is not going to be perfect. You're not going to have all the time in the world and you still have to make the decision, right? Um, and another exciting part of that is that you don't, you don't do that uh, on your own. You do it in the, in, the first, uh, in, in the first moment. So you have the individual preparation and that's um, a very important and key part of the process. So the more, and I say it empirically and from per first hand, the, the um, uh, cases that I would prepare more and that I would go deeper, the learnings that you get from the case, from the class discussions are much bigger, right? So you learn much more the more you prepare. So in the, the individual preparation is very important. Um, so that's the moment that you're going to read. And that was me with my Brazilian um, management consultant, um, industrial engineer mindset. I would look at a problem and I would prioritize certain um, aspects of it and then make my decision. Then I would go into my team and the team at the SA are uh, groups uh, made of eight to 10 people and they are assigned by the school. So we can guarantee diversity in terms of backgrounds, nationalities, and other um, factors of a person's profile. So we can have the most diverse team uh, that we can, right? Again, because the more diversity, the more perspectives, and then the more perspectives, um, the more exciting and uh, richer the case discussion will be. Then once you've discussed the cases of the day with your team, you go into the classroom, that at the SA is um, uh, made of 70 students in one classroom. We have five sections. Um, and then you discuss uh, with a larger group, right? Um, and then just some uh, hidden, hidden advantages that we have uh, from all of this that I've uh, explained um, in a lot of details. Uh, just for you to see that um, just like the protagonists of the cases, you learn to make the decisions under uncertainty and begin to develop the courage to uh, act upon these decisions through ongoing practice, right? And you see that in the beginning of the cases, you're very insecure and um, you don't feel that confident um, in making the decisions, right? And as you practice, you start building this mental framework in your head uh, that, uh, and, that, and that's very particular and very uh, unique of each person. It's not that we're trying to teach any, any specific framework. Each person kind of develops their own. Um, and then as uh, time goes and as you practice more, um, you get more confident, right? And then you will be a better leader because of that. You have all the social side of the case preparation uh, where you're comparing your perspective with the perspective of others. Um, and then you're more prepared to respond better to the many directions that the class, the class discussion will take, right? Uh, and again, in the beginning, I remember that um, I don't consider myself a shy person. Um, I, I actually like to talk and speak a lot. When, when I was in the classroom in the first term, I would feel very nervous about raising my hand and giving my opinion, right? Just because um, I had prepare, prepared something um, before the class and I had something to say, but the class just takes so many directions and uh, professors just ask uh, questions that we're not ready to answer or you hadn't prepared. Um, but because you're constantly um, exposed to the, those shifts and those different perspectives that you, um, you become better in connecting different points and building new opinions and new perspectives as the class, as the, the, the class goes, right? It's not um, uh, coming to the class with a script and um, with ex the, the exact points that you want to talk about usually doesn't work, right? That's not the, um, uh, that's not the objective. The objective of the case method is not to be right or to have the best answer. Uh, the, the objective of the case discussion is really to discuss Take people's um, uh, different perspectives, build your own, and uh, bring new insights and see where the discussion is going. Uh, and then be more um, prepared to uh, come up with a final uh, opinion, right? Um, then you learn to think, on your th to, to think on your feet, to present your ideas concisely. I think that this is very important. Um, you know, sometimes in the class you have one shot. Um, and the class and the professor 
they don't have enough patience uh, for you to be speaking for five, 10 minutes. Uh, so you have to be direct, you have to be straight um, uh, to the point so you can convey your message and your insight in the best way. Um, and you also learn to listen to insights that are different from your own. And I think that all of this um, teaches us a lot about humility and teamwork, right? Um, I think that as MBAs, we go into business school, and especially if you are admitted in the top one, um, we go with a lot of um, self-pride and, um, and like a, a bit of a big ego. We usually had a very successful careers so far, and we're not that used to being wrong, right? Um, so when you come, you are surrounded by very bright people that have opinions that are very different from yours. And then you learn to be wrong a lot, right? And, um, and how to take the opinions and perspectives of others and build um, on them, right? You don't have to be right all the time. And you do that uh, inside a team and a team that is very diverse, right? And we're going to talk about the composition of the class um, uh, still. But I think that this is one of the biggest advantages at the SA is that uh, you will have um, a very diverse uh, team to get these different perspectives from. Um, and the role of the faculty. Um, so more than the ultimate holder of all the knowledge in the world, the professor has um, much more of a maestro um, role inside the classroom, right? So he's there to ask the right questions, call out the maybe the right uh, the right people that will um, uh, take the discussion towards the right direction right they will present um, uh, conceptual frameworks near the end they summarize the discussion it's always the, the, the summary of the case is always shorter than you would expect because um, we're kind of hoping for more answers and more insights and oh, okay what uh, what really happened uh, but that's not, the, um, that's not the point, right? The objective is not to um, have a right answer at the end or learn what the, the company did, because maybe the company took a decision that was not great, right? Again, it's the real world and sometimes we, uh, we don't take the, um, uh, <laughs> the right decisions. Um, and on top of everything, and the professors are, um, a group of people that really embrace CSA's values, right? So not only an open door policy, they really have a mentoring approach to the students, right? So not only they stay after class uh, to answer questions, but you can always uh, schedule a lunch, schedule um, a, a meeting with them to talk about the class, to talk about your career, to talk about your life. <laughs> I've, um, um, I've used some uh, professors during my MBA, uh, whenever I was uh, in crisis or when I wanted to um, just um, uh, have a more senior opinion. And now that I've been here and that I'm lucky to be on campus and have um, access to professors, I still have lunches. I still cry on their shoulders. And, uh, and it's interesting to see how they remember. They remember classmates of mine that are not working for ESA for the past five years. So it's not, uh, not only my privilege. Um, so I think that this is also a good, um, a, a good um, um, proof of how strong ESA's um, mission and values of collaboration and spirit of service um, is. And then um, I just wanted to quickly pass um, through the program and the structure and the career center in the end, uh, before we open for questions. So ESA is a course that you can um, uh, finish in either 15 or 19 months. Um, you don't have to commit to that um, in, in the beginning uh, or before applying. This is a decision that you make uh, in the end, uh, in the middle of the first year. So we start, uh, well, we first start with a business Spanish program, which is uh, Spanish classes. Uh, so we start with two weeks of intensive classes uh, in August. And then in September, we start the core courses, okay? So this is a moment where we get the 350 students. We split them into five sections of 70. And then inside the 70, you're going to have that team that I've mentioned um, a couple of times. Um, and then this is um, uh, the moment where you're going to have the very typical MBA uh, subjects, right? On leadership, um, uh, operations, finance, marketing, 
also decision analysis, um, analysis of business problems. That is um, uh, a course that is it's in the first term and the professor is really trying to build the case method mindset in our students. So there is a there's a very pedagogical um, um, purpose to the to ABP in the first term. Um, and here also we don't have any waves. So even if you are a certified accountant, you're still going to have the same financial accounting that me as an industrial engineer had uh, because we are expecting the students to learn from each other uh, and complement uh, each other's expertise. OK. And then um, if you go for the 15 month uh, track, you have two months of um, two terms of electives. And then if you go for the, um, uh, the 19 months, you stay at the SA during summer, sorry, you, you go doing summer, you're out there doing a summer internship in a company, uh, or you can stay at the SA and do the summer entrepreneurship experience in case you are looking um, at developing your own business idea. And then um, we come back from summer. We also have two terms of uh, electives and more international uh, opportunities that we have are one, the overseas modules that are elected from ESA. So these are two weeks of uh, intensive classes that you can go to New York, Brazil, Shanghai, or Nairobi um, in either August or January. And to have the exposure to the corporate culture of uh, these four cities around the world, okay? And then the, the exchange program is uh, instead of doing a term at ESA, you go and do the electives in another school. We have partnership with uh, 30 schools around the world. Many of them are in the US. So it's basically the top schools in the United States that have um, uh, exchange programs. But we also have Latin America. We have uh, London Business School and HEC in Europe. And we have a couple in, uh, in Asia. And then everybody graduates together in May. Okay, so instead, although the classes uh, from the 15 months uh, track finishes in December, the graduation ceremony is uh, together in May because we're all part of the same class. Okay, and in the second year, um, where I've mentioned that, that that's the moment where you're going to have the electives, right? So um, I think I've mentioned in the beginning the general management approach where. In the first year, you're going to have all the typical MBA courses. The second year is your, your opportunity to uh, specialize in an um, uh, in, um, area that you prefer, right? Or that you feel more interested in. And now we've launched um, uh, the concentrations that um, if you do five credits and under one of these uh, four umbrellas, you can have a certificate that says, Paula is um, uh, specialized in data analytics and digital business, right? And this is a signal that you, uh, you send to the market and potential employers that you have a deeper knowledge on that specific area, okay? Um, and then the typical class at ESA, the 350 students uh, split into five sections. Uh, now we are split in seven. So uh, because of COVID um, and social distancing, we have seven sections. But five is the usual. We have 85% um, of our students coming from outside of Spain um, with a 25, 29 years uh, old in, on average, five years of work experience also on average, uh, 680 GMAT as, um, and 30% women. That is a percentage that we're always trying to increase, right? And um, the diversity in ESA doesn't come only from the nationalities, right? This is something that in the admissions team, we're very uh, focused and always bringing. My team is actually regionalized. So we have um, uh, regional directors responsible for US, Canada, Latin America, Europe, Asia, uh, because we understand how valuable it can be <clears throat> to be in a class with more nationalities, right? And we try to keep a fair split um, among the regions. Um, so we don't have an overwhelming uh, number of students coming from only one country or only one, one region. And we have more than 50 nationalities in the classroom. But the diversity doesn't come only from the nationalities. It's also, it also comes from the backgrounds. Um, so as you can see, almost 60% of our students come uh, from industry and services, which is basically everything that is not finance, consulting, and social uh, and public sector, right? So this means um, that um, um, whenever you are discussing a case, 
uh, you will have people that have uh, experience in all sorts of sectors. So when I was saying that um, uh, we are exposed to cases uh, in different industries, it's very likely that you will have in your 70 um, uh, classmate cohort, um, someone that has experience in that sector. And that makes everything more interesting, right? Because then if you are discussing a strategy um, uh, case, and then you have someone uh, in the aviation industry and you have someone that worked in that um, in aviation, they can tell you um, how the um, strategy in their company worked, right? And the challenges that they've uh, faced in certain moments in time. Uh, and that's um, why the case discussion in such a diverse um, uh, environment like ESA can be very enriching. And then just to finish, um, to comment on the Career Development Center, that I know that this is, um, as MBAs, most of us, I'm not going to say all, but most of us are looking for a career shift, right? Uh, I can put myself uh, under that category. Um, I, was, I, I, I did my MBA because I wanted to move away from consulting uh, towards something uh, more social um, driven um, impact, um, more social driven industry. Uh, and that is the reason why I'm here today, um, working in an education uh, institution. So the mission of our career center is to partner with companies um, and also equip the students um, with the right tools and resources and mindset to help them achieve their uh, career goals, right? And how they do that. They do that through business development. So I'm going to show you the team. You have the key account managers that are responsible for developing and nurturing the relationship uh, with companies from all different sectors and all different regions. Um, you have the career management team that is the team that is um, uh, responsible for building that toolbox that will equip the students better. Um, so here we're going to have workshops on um, how to build a good CV, how to do a good cover letter, how to um, do a good interview, how to be good at networking, right? I think that this is more and more we have... Um, um, uh, companies and different industries, especially in the tech um, uh, sector, uh, in startups, that are unstructured uh, recruiting processes, right? So it's not the, um, we don't have the Bible on how to um, uh, um, apply for consulting or investment banking or the big, um, uh, the big consumer goods. A lot of the companies that are out there today are very networking based, right? So we will give you tools on how to be better at so important uh, space, right? And then uh, countless and every year there are more and more, um, uh, but these are professional clubs on consulting, finance, uh, fintech, um, a responsible business club, the women in business club. And then the idea is for the students to get exposure um, to the companies uh, in the in specific um, uh, sectors, right? And then they they get this exposure by inviting companies to uh, come and lecture for our students, um, organizing tracks and company visits, uh, not only in Barcelona but also um, different uh, countries. So I went to the tech uh, track in London where we visited Uber, Amazon, um, IBM, um, uh, Samsung, and, and several others. And then in, I went to the Berlin track that was um, organized by the Startup Entrepreneurs um, Club that we, we visited many startups, right? And then networked also with the um, alumni that uh, were based in Berlin. Um, and this is our... Um, our beautiful team, as you can see, they are split by uh, sec sectors mostly. So if you are interested in consulting, Noel is going to be your guy. Uh, Marcela is the, the one responsible for finance, uh, Zia is in healthcare and so on. Mike and Sandra, the, um, um, the ones responsible for building your toolbox. And then the area coordinators that support the, the associate directors. And I think that's something interesting from, uh, from uh, the career center as well is that um, in the associate directors level, so the key account managers, they all have MBAs from ESA. Um, so this basically means that they've all been in the shoes of having to look for a job, have to network, have to exploit ESA's resources and the career center 
to um, increase and leverage their chances, right? And they usually have um, experience in the sector, right? So Marcela was in investment banking in City, uh, Noel was in consulting before coming, Zion is a pharmacist and um, uh, was working with, with health healthcare before the MBA and after the MBA as well. Um, so they all bring um, their individual experiences as well. Um, and other than the industry focused um, directors, we have the regional directors. Uh, so Melissa is based in Sao Paulo and nurturing and developing relationships with company around, uh, companies around Latin America. Mike is responsible for the um, North American students. And then we, we also have a big Asia team and we organize a lot of uh, events, right? So the Career Forum is the big one uh, where companies come uh, to present their opportunities and uh, have some networking opportunity with the, with the students. Uh, we do one in November and another one in February. We also have uh, the career and the Asia Career Summit uh, that is happening, um, that happens in the end of uh, March, beginning of April. We have the Latam Career Fair, that is um, um, an event that we organize together with London Business School and INSEAD. So it's to uh, attract and be more attractive uh, to companies coming and recruiting in Latin America. Um, uh, so we can be uh, more appealing. Uh, other than the very regular um, uh, speakers that just come to campus uh, to network with the students. And then I also included the startup career fair that uh, we had last week and I and that I connected to see how it went and it was actually pretty cool. I felt I felt like being an MBA student again and applying for a startup. Um, so we got 37 uh, startups uh, to join um, and then they come, it was, it was held online, obviously. Uh, so all our career events are happening online and the companies have adapted. We are not the only ones that are online in the world at the end. Uh, so they came, they pitched uh, for two minutes uh, what the company was about, what the opportunities that they had. And then uh, after the round of uh, pitches, um, the students could choose the companies that they wanted to uh, talk to, okay? And then from there, we get a lot of um, internships and, and, and full-time opportunities and offers, okay? This is the um, um, regional split in terms of um, uh, placement of the class of 2020. Um, this is just one photograph of the employment reports that we have. And we are very, we have a very detailed employment report. So I would highly recommend you to uh, study th thoroughly. Um, and then some um, interesting numbers, 33%. Uh, so a third of our students are crazy and go for the triple jump. Uh, so this means that they, they changed um, geography um, uh, function and industry, okay? This is not something that we would highly recommend because it can be especially challenging, but um, I feel that the, the, the whole diversity of uh, recruiters coming on campus um, also expose our students to different industries and uh, that make it more possible for them to uh, do, do the switch, okay? Um, and then in terms of sector, we, we have a third of our students going to consult, consulting. This is a very consistent um, number, okay? Then the other, the other um, sectors that, are, that usually change and, and vary a bit more. But then in second place comes uh, industry. That is just the miscellaneous um, of, um, of sectors. And 22% going to finance and 70% going to tech and then different uh, function. Okay. Um, so I think that now I'm done with the, um, with the information that I wanted to share. Uh, we still have 20 minutes um, to dedicate to Q&A. So Martina, how do we do this? Yes, thank you so much for this really interesting uh, presentation. And we have a couple of questions. And I will start with the first one, uh, which I uh, can see in the chat box. Uh, hello, could you tell me about the English language requirement and do you need GMAT or GRE? Yes, okay. So um, the application process at the essay is a very standard one. Um, so it's going to be very similar to all the other top business schools, okay? So yes, we do need a GMAT or a GRE. And, uh, as, as I said, the, the average GMAT is 680. 
we don't have a G, we don't have an average of the GRE because uh, not that many students um, apply yet. Um, so we don't have enough data uh, to have an average, but a good score would be as 160 in both verbal and quant, right? And in terms of the English requirement, if you are not a native speaker or if you haven't done your university in English or haven't worked for two years in an English speaking country, you will need a TOEFL or an IELTS, or I think that there are a couple of other options, um, uh, but we need advanced level, right? And especially coming from a case method um, uh, environment where <laughs> we speak a lot in the classroom, right? So you need to have like a very good level of English so you're able to convey your um, your messages and your ideas properly okay not to say that we are expecting everybody to have a native um, um, level <laughs> we actually uh, appreciate accents uh, a lot so you don't have to worry that much about that but um, you need to be able to convey your message clearly okay so we ask for um, a TOEFL of a minimum of 100. Thank you, Paula, for this uh, answer. Um, another question is, what's the difference between EMBA and global EMBA? Uh, okay. Please, could you explain this? Yes. Um, so the executive MBA is a part-time uh, program that happens uh, in person. Okay, so these are for the more, um, uh, the bit older than the MBA. So they're usually 34, 35 uh, years old with 10 years of work experience and for people that are working right and so you have some intensive um, weeks throughout the 19 months and you have classes on um, Fridays and Saturdays the global executive MBA is for the super super senior uh, people so they have to have at, at least minimum 14 years of work experience they are a blended program and they have different tracks so being blended means that you will have your class and you will have your team, but people will have will be spread around the world and then they will come together in um, some intensive weeks uh, throughout the 19 months. Um, so it's a very, it's, they are very different. Um, so long story short, we call them GEMBA. So the GEMBA is a more senior and blended program while the, um, uh, the EMBA is for uh, middle managers uh, and part-time in person. Great, thank you for this detailed answer. Um, there is a couple of questions about scholarships. So in, in, summar, in summarizing, could you please explain about the scholarships for international students and what's the criteria for applying? Great, because okay. Because there are a couple of questions about this. Yes, um, always an important topic to keep in mind when we are applying. Um, we have several scholarships and I think that um, uh, luckily the scholarship budget at the SA is quite generous. Uh, it's never gonna be the same as the American school. So <laughs> I would manage the expectations here. Um, uh, Europeans, uh, Europe and the US uh, work very differently in terms of uh, scholarship um, uh, resources. But for us, it's a merit-based um, uh, criteria, right? So you have to show uh, strong academic records. The GMAT is going to be especially important for scholarships and um, your career progression. And also um, your performance in the uh, throughout the application proce uh, process, right? So how you did in the interview, your interactions uh, with the team. We are trying to be, uh, bring the people and retain the people that are very aligned with ESA's values and missions and, and that will add to our culture, right? So um, we use the scholarships uh, to try to retain um, the students that we feel that will add even more and bring in even more diversity, right? So if you go into our, our website, you will see the different scholarships um, that we have, right? So we have um, scholarships for women, scholarships for emerging markets, scholarship uh, for leaders in Africa. We have a diversity scholarship that is um, um, meant for um, candidates coming from underprivileged backgrounds or L LGBTQ. So uh, students that we feel that will add even more diversity to the classroom um, from the way that they identify themselves. Um, 
and well, the, we have we have many other types of scholarship, but for you to apply is a very simple process. Um, it's together in the same um, uh, application form. There will be a question: Do you wish to apply for ESA scholarship? You mark yes, and then you have to write a specific uh, essay on how you plan to finance your MBA and why you think you deserve the scholarship. Yeah, it's a very competitive um, process and. The scholarships can go usually up to 50%. In the case of the um, uh, um, leaders in Africa, it can go up to 90%, okay? Because we are very much committed to bringing more people from Africa um, on, on, on campus, to campus. Great, thank you, Paula, for this uh, information. Um, we have a question from a candidate from Malaysia. Um, and the question is, if currently I'm still pursuing for my master in uh, Islamic finance course in Malaysia and with five years experience in banking clients, which MBA that will suit my experience and studies? That's well, if you, um, if you have five years of work experience, uh, I would say that the MBA is the best. Um, I, th I think it's the best, uh, the MBA would be the best. I think that it's also, um, it's not only about your profile, right? It's also about what you're looking for um, uh, uh, to get out of the program, right? Like the full-time MBA, uh, as the name says, it's full-time. It means dropping your, um, uh, uh, dropping your job, coming here, being completely immersed uh, on campus for 19 months. You know, it's, um, it's a different commitment than if you go for the executive MBA, for example. The, the, the thing about the executive MBA is that we don't have a campus in Malaysia, right? So for you to do an MBA with us, you would even either have to be working in Barcelona, Munich, Madrid, or Sao Paulo, right? Uh, because we are looking in, in the MBA with, for people that are working, right? Because it's the value proposition of the, the program is for the students to come to class, learn, uh, go back to their jobs, apply that, and bring the learning back, right? So the the, the feedback cycle is much uh, faster than the full-time MBA, right? So we are looking for people that are working. But uh, in this case, I would say that the MBA seems like the best choice. Great. Thank you for the answer. Another question is from a lady that is from Lebanese, and she's persuading now her doctorate in business administration in France. And she said, um, I would like to check if I can do post-doctorate in your university, although my thesis is in French, but I do like to continue in English. Um, in uh, corruptions, is it possible? <laughs> That's the question. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually a very good question. Do we have postdoc here in DSA? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I would have to. I would have to check that. Um, we probably have, you know, in in the website. If um, if she goes uh, in our website, you will have um, a specific context of the mm -hmm. PhD uh, program, right? Because I'm not really sure if we have a postdoc, uh, PhD, I'm, I'm sure we do. Uh, it's a very good one. But the postdoc, I'm not really sure how it works. Um, mm -hmm. I would suggest uh, asking this to someone that would know best uh, so I don't give any wrong, any wrong okay. answer. Okay, thank you. Uh, she has another question about visas. Um, she asked if she needs a visa because she's from Leban Lebanon. Yes, to study everybody, uh, if you're not from the European Union, not only the, the, the Lebanese, uh, but everybody that is not from the European Union, if you're coming to study, you will need a student visa. Uh, and also to, to, to work in the country, you will also need a work visa. Uh, but if you're coming to a program, even if it's, if it's the PhD, um, uh, if it's a full-time program, yes, they will give you the paper so you can go to your consulate and, and get the... Uh, and get a visa, okay? And we usually don't have problems with that. Okay, thank you for the answer. Uh, we have a question about um, exchange programs, but between campuses, do you have such programs? No, we don't. The, the, the maximum that we have is the overseas modules that it's for two weeks, uh, right? Um, uh, that's kind of the only moment where the MBAs intersect uh, with, um, 
with our other campuses. And this happens with New York and Sao Paulo because Shanghai and Nairobi are actually associated schools that we have the modules in. And the reason for that is that uh, the um, programs that we have in each of the campuses are different, right? So the full-time MBA only happens in Barcelona, right? So the, we have the executive MBA that happens Barcelona, Madrid, uh, Sao Paulo, and Munich. Um, so it's not necessarily that we, we offer all MBA-related courses in all of the campuses, right? That's, that's the reason why uh, we don't do exchange programs uh, with our campuses. Okay, thank you for uh, the answer. Um, another question is, um, if I have eight years of experience, does that put me at a disadvantage when it comes to admissions for the full-time MBA? Thank you. Uh, okay, that's an excellent question. Not necessarily, okay. Um, so the five years um, of work experience that I showed, it's now leaning more towards the six, to be honest. So we've been uh, growing in terms of uh, work experience. Um, but not necessarily. Eight is still quite uh, close to the six average. And even if you have more, it will depend on your case, right? Um, I think it's important to notice. I think that the eight years of work experience, it's fine. You're not going to be that much, uh, that much more experienced than the others. But we do have cases of people that have 10, 12, 14, especially in some uh, regions where the uh, uh, people tend to do MBAs a bit later uh, due to uh, cultural cultural matters, right? Uh, the only um, the only thing to keep in mind if you are if you distance yourself too much from the average is that you might fall out from the um, profile that recruiters are looking for, right? So when we have a McKinsey or an Amazon or a Google coming to campus, they kind of have the typical MBA profile in their heads, right? And they are looking uh, for people that fit a specific um, uh, level in their organization, right? They are maybe uh, looking into hiring a middle manager uh, or a junior manager. And if you are too experienced, they might not have um, a position for you with what they are bringing to campus, right? Uh, so this is the, the one of the only things that I would see as a disadvantage. It's not necessarily our 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 problem in admissions. I think that this is um, this is something for the students to and the candidates to keep in mind, right? That they might need to be more resilient, more proactive more network more uh like better networkers right because maybe the opportunities that come to campus are not the opportunities that uh, would suit them and then they will have to go after it but i think that work eight is okay but uh, just to keep this in mind okay thank you so much i believe that we have answered all of the questions if i'm missing something um you can contact the candidates later on uh, thank you so much. Uh, I want to launch um, two questions as a feedback. Um, so please take time to answer just to know if this session was um, useful for you. Uh, thank you once again to our speakers today for taking time to give you this information and asking all of the questions. Well, thank you guys. Um, thanks for all the answers. Thanks for being here. Um, uh, well, I just wanted to finish with the with a message that our team uh, at the SA is a very approachable one, uh, and I think that this is we uh, many of us do uh, have um, MBAs from ESA. I'm not the only one in the team, so we know how important that decision and that moment uh, in your lives um, is. Uh, we're very sympathetic uh, with that, uh, so we're always hoping to um, uh, to be helpful and assist you in the best way. Um, so feel free to reach out. Uh, we have our contacts in our webpage, um, and we, we can always put you in contact with alumni, current students, to help you in this uh, very mo important moment. Um, so feel free to reach out, please. And, uh, and thanks, Martina, for the invitation and for the lovely moderation. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for me. It was a pleasure, too. Thank you for this.
really interesting event. Okay, thank to all of you that take time to answer the questions. Um, I want to wish you all a good luck in your academic journey and hope to see you again soon online. <laughs> Thank you once again and have a nice day. Bye.